Then one of the mysteries of his omnipotence is that he invites men, weak men like we are, to participate with him and cooperate with him. You know, I want to tell you this. You know, you're not going to marry me. Just think about it for a minute. That God omnipotent, God Almighty, many, many times he seeks the cooperation of men for the accomplishment of his plan for the world. Have you ever thought about it? That if God is truly omnipotent, why doesn't he just go ahead and do whatever he wants to do without a human cooperation, without human consent? Why doesn't he just go do anything like anyhow? Because he's almighty and he's omnipotent. Many times when God wants to walk, he can walk without our hair. No matter how clever we are, no matter how strong we are, we cannot destroy the plan of God. Even though God is almighty, and even though he wants our cooperation, even if we don't cooperate, he can do the work without us. And yet, God will not do anything without our cooperation. Look at Adam here, and all these people who are the head of our nation, if they want to do anything, they don't have to seek your cooperation. If they want to give a degree, they don't call you to the meeting or the committee meeting or assembly. They don't do everything and they tell you now this is what everybody must do. And yet they are not as powerful as God, but look at God. As great and mighty as God that God is, He will not do anything without your cooperation. Isn't that a privilege and a wonderful opportunity for that matter? That God calls you and me into partnership with Him. Before we pray, I want to introduce you to this mystery of omnipotence. And you know there are many people in the church who don't know this omnipotence of God. They know the omnipotence of God, but they do not know the mystery of that omnipotence. What is the omnipotence of God? That God is powerful, God can do everything and anything. But the mystery of it is that God will not do anything as powerful as it. He will not do anything without your cooperation, without my cooperation. And today in the text I've read to you in Matthew chapter 14, we see the mystery of that omnipotence as taught by Jesus Christ. That God can take the little we have and can do marvelous things with that little we give to him. Today I will talk to you on three points from that passage, Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. I'll talk to you on three points from that passage. Point one, introduction to human needs. That's in verses 13, 14, and 15. Point two, invitation to divine partnership. That is in verses 15, 16, and 17. And then point three, investment to the most high. That is in verses 17 to 21. That's the three points I'll talk about today before we pray. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. We will see how to follow the Lord's will. They gather together unto him. What was their need? Because you know that people don't go after God if they don't have any need. What in the passage here today, we are introduced to the needs of humanity. 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 But for things, Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. The best need we have here is that these people, they were sick people. 
And the disciples had the opportunity of hearing the problem of that woman. I wonder, you want to hear that? And that's going to buy for all the But instead of doing something about that problem, I want to open up for all the things. You are the one crying about, send her away. Don't like people just discussing our matter. I won't. 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 I And a great number of people, blind, battling. The son of Simeon sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many touched him, that he should hold his feet. For he cried the more great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Don't you want to get it? 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 Ati o kwa mwenye ni, bato ni u, apaju amati u, ni kwa leta ina wote kwa ni kwa sisi kwa, jeshi na lala ni, wote la jeshi kwa leo la lani kwa, jeshi wamada jeshi kama kumi, o kwa la kosi ba, kwa sio kwa nini na, kwa wote ni kwa jeshi kwa leo kwa, wamada jeshi kama kumi, ni kwa jeshi kwa, kwa kwa 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 kwa, kwa Son of David, have mercy on me. He is begging for mercy. He realized that he had a problem, and he was looking for a solution. But look at Jesus and the disciples and the people. They didn't have solution to the problem. Jesus was solution to the problem. They didn't want the man to come in contact with Jesus. And oh my, oh my, what a fool! I am. They didn't want me. They didn't want me. You better come here. Go to Baba. And they told him, shut up. Where are you? Go to Baba. Go to Baba. Go to Baba. Go to Baba. The world has a problem. The people around us have a problem. And once a while, like this, God will take our eyes to see the problems of people. But we human beings are telling that when we are faced with the problem of man, we pretend as if the problem is not there, we look at another direction, we behave as if we can't see that problem. We look away from that problem, and yet the problem is there. Look at the people in our town today. Look at all the people in all this region, they have problems. And many, many times we see that problem. But we behave that if we don't see the problem, I think the problem is not there. Why not? We are behaving like the disciples of Jesus Christ. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Desert place 
and the time is now past, send the multitude to the wind, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves this one. But Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Look at your glass, I need you there to leave. And they say unto me, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. Look at your glass, I let our men let your wife say, Five 
know. That means one low for one thousand people. How are they going to do it? And whenever we are told to human problems like this, human beings naturally, we see our inadequacy. We don't see the omnipotence of God, we see our own inadequacy. You must see that the disciples could not leave the need of those people. You must see that the disciples could not leave the need of those people. You must see that the disciples could not leave the need of those people. You must see that the disciples could not leave the need of those people. Because the reason you are bringing you have no time to be bringing you. You are bringing the little you have so that the importance of God can work with you. No, they didn't bring you. They said it is such a small thing. They said they are working in a big way. They didn't see the importance of God. And the same thing with us. In this December now, maybe they are saying in your role that in our role we are supposed to bring 12 uh, 12 bags of rice and 12 uh, you know, bags of beans uh, uh, and maybe we are to bring 2,000 naira. Uh, and he has said, where will we get all these things? I have got 15 hours to drink and look at all this, if they drink 15 hours, how much? I can't, you can't be on that big bag of rice, up there for 15 bags of rice that you tell you to drink. And yet, the only potent of God is there. And God says, the little you are, bring this, so that I will multiply it. And kill all these 5,000 people, and they are the extra left after all the feeding. And if you are one of you, you must get this up and put it down. God has given to some people to divine partnership. You know God gave that call to the disciples, said, give them to you. He was inviting them to have partnership of business with him. Look at 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarifa. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, garden of sheep. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. And as he was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a fruit. And behold, I am guarding to see that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. That me, as I say, what did you say? What did you say? What did you say? ก็ที่เกิดขึ้นเรื่องเพราะการใจดีกันนี่ได้ก็ที่เกิดขึ้นเรื่องเพราะการใจดีกันนี่ได้ก็ที่เกิดขึ้นเรื่องเพราะการใ
a ti o mu elo a ti gbo 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 to ti ni ka mu won yen awon kere je ta ni ti ni ka ta ti gbo e fun olorun ni ni pe o olorun gba ile ya ti gbo olorun se so je opolopo iroyin ti ti won ti gbo mi le bi pe le ngba ta ba ti se awon ipade la bi iru awon ka ba yi ni iru so ni wa ni ni pe opolopo awon yen le ni ipade se le mo re won yagara ma nja won ni opolopo se mo nsa isan igbe mi so ti wa o pe le yi o ni sele le ni ipade yi pe pe ti ni emi mo ni ti ngba diga pe la gbo olorun pe ni odun ti bo se o ko wa ta o se ni o ko se be je te pe ti ma se ni pe ipade le jo ju mo se ni gbo wo mo wa So then Jesus invited them to partnership with him and they did. Let's now go back to Matthew chapter fourteen. Let us now see what happened. And in verse sixteen, Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Let us now see what happened. And in verse sixteen, Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to him. Jesus said, If you want to pray, what will you do? If you want to enjoy, and they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. What will you do? If you want to pray, I want to enjoy. I want to need you at this work. I'm a man. I'm a judge. 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 I want to need you to carry my heart. I just make me easy. What if we pray and move away? Me easy. Jesus is saying to us today. Just if you don't talk to me, I'm not going to bring them here to me. And move away. Me easy. Oh, when you say it's not much, you say I know. Just bring them to me. I want them to pray. 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 Let me hear. Don't stop. Pray. Pray. And move away. I'm here to tell you this. Just move away. Don't let me worry. If I ask you now, you must pray. Move away. Who does Jesus? Multiply, give food to all those people out of nothing, without any bread, without anything, without those people bringing anything. Could he not just multiply stones and turn them to bread? I'm sure he could do that. Yeah. That was what Satan said he should do because Satan knew he could do it. But Jesus said, "Here, yeah, I can do miracles, but you come and invest something." You say you have five fishes, uh, five bread, and two fish. Bring that thing. That is what I want. I will invest that thing with me. I will multiply it for you. They get to fish. They don't have to 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 get According to John chapter six verse eight, that bread, five loaves bread, three loaves of bread, and two fish belong to a young boy. I think his mother must have given him as breakfast. That this is a breakfast, or maybe lunch. Well, you are going for a long uh, program, okay? So that we have something to eat. There, take this, and he took it there. And so that breakfast, for that small boy, that that boy invested. And what did he get for it? He got food for five thousand people. And then twelve baskets were left over. When you bring the little you have and you invest it with God, God will multiply it for all the people. After it, you will have left over for yourself. Okay, here, 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 here And he's asking you today. You know, I thank God for people who are obedient to the word of God. People who not think that they are so little and that they can't bring that little to God. What do you have? Not small mass. Bring that mass. Give us a bring it either to me. What do you have? You have plate. You have cup. You have spoon. He says, bring that either to me. I want to use it. I will multiply it. After we finish, you will get your mask back. You will get extra back. So then, you just put a bucket there, yeah, and be so generous to me. I guess you will go more. You put them, but what do you want? Oh, what? So, so, what do you need? No, generally we don't preach about money in the palace. No, we don't commercialize those food here. No, no, no. I will go back to the Nepal. I will need your to put in. I will want to hear. But you know, last Sunday I was led of God, and I, I said I will be preaching on, you know, uh, giving and you know, giving to God, pathway to blessing. No, no, stop bringing up. So, what do you want? Come on, man, that was for Lori. I'm on a TV program, and I went to one of our churches, very small church, maybe, maybe about, maybe they are, they are not even up to hundred of them in that church, very small. One of me, maybe our smallest church.
come here. And I went there and I preached and I told them that this is what God says, that the little you have, bring it to God, that give and it shall be given unto you, and good measure and all that. And I finished all the preaching, I just left, it's about an hour message I gave, and I left. And you know, the leader came back to me later and said that, you know, during the week, somebody just came and just among those small people, those few people like that, and he just brought 5,000 and I said, this is what the church will you. I said, what? From that small church, somebody brought 5,000? Just after a message, people who obey the word of God, when you invest the little you are, and you know what it is, I believe God, God will bless that person. I don't know whoever the person is, but when people obey the word of God, God will bless them. And you see that small boy, he brought his belly loaf and bread and small things, and God multiplied it and fed 5,000 people. And after it, they had 12 baskets. Who do you think will use that 12 baskets? Do you think Jesus will use it? Or you think the disciples will use it? They didn't take it. But, you know, they just, they just said, now gather all the fragments, they gather all the fragments. I'm sure Jesus would have told them, give the basket to that boy. He brought five loaves and two fishes, and you know what he brought in his home. When you bring the little you have, when you invest it with God, God will bless you. He will meet the needs of men, and you yourself, you will meet your own needs as well. That is the pathway to bless you. Look, even the baskets, where did the baskets come from? You think Jesus was brave out with baskets all over the city? All the disciples were brave out with baskets all over the city? No, those baskets belong to some of the people who came there. And they brought their empty baskets, and Jesus said, You brought empty baskets? I will feel it for you. Why? 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 That's what many of us in the church here don't know. You know, they have to beg you, give to God, give money, give your time, give your service. We want to build things. Come and build things. They beg you. You know, when you know the word of God, that when you invest something to God, you even be begging the church to take what you want to give. Like Lydia was begging the uh, Paul, and the other said, you must stay in my house. You must stay in my house. Because he knows that when people stay in my house, blessing will come. But when you don't understand that when you invest something with God, God will bless you for it, then they will be begging you, bring money, give to God, pay your tithe, bring your offering. You know, you are not supposed to beg you. You know the Bible that when you invest, God will bless you. If all of us are investing, I tell you, the blessing of God will be so much upon this church that as few as we are, we will do great and tremendous things, not only physically, not only spiritually, in all areas of our lives as a church, we will be for signs and for wonders in Jesus' name. And let us understand that when you invest something with God, God will give you back. Look at that uh, woman when she did the cake for Elisha or Elijah. After she finished the cake, they ate the food and then she had and then there was food every day, every day for three and a half years. There was increment of food every day and they never laughed. They never suffered for all those three and a half years just because she outside the man of God. When you give to God, when you invest to God, your money, your time, your life, God will bless that thing you give. They will return to you double fold in Jesus' name. Alors, 
That little boy was not selfish. He didn't say, all these foolish people, they are dying of hunger. Thank God, I'm wise. I have brought my own breakfast. I will just eat my own in one corner here. I will not just allow them to see my food because if they see it, they will take it from me. No, he brought back his food and he gave it to the disciples. He said, give it to them, anything you can do, do it. And he used it and he multiplied it. All the people's needs were made. Now, you have something you want to give to God. Why don't you bring it? And let God use it for the retreat. You have the, you know, motor car? Bring your car so that they mount the loudspeaker on it and make noise all over the town. You have the, anything, mask, you have the property, things that you think are, that can be useful. You don't need to wait for anybody to beg you. You are the one who should be looking, asking the church, do you need my drum? Do you need my tank? Do you need my mask? Do you need my motor car? Do you need my money? Do you need my food stuff? You know, somebody was telling me yesterday, the brother in the campus, he said, I have a farm, a cassava farm. He said, all my cassava farm, I give it to the church. I just saw the cassava and then process it and make garlic and so that people can eat. You think God will not bless that brother? I tell you God will bless it. Whatever I plant after that cassava has been harvested, that ground has become very good ground. That's what I'm talking about. When you give a little, God will multiply it unto you. Where can you invest with the Almighty God today? You can invest your soul if you are not yet saved. If you are still in your life, you need to invest your life with God. Give your soul to Jesus Christ. Because Proverbs 23 verse 26, God says, My son, give me thine heart. It's asking you to give your heart. So you give it, it will give you back. It's an alarm. What can you invest again? You can invest your mouth to publicize this program. From today, I want to see all over the town, everybody in this church, announcing to people and telling them, this is what God will do. Come over to the place you have put your hands in your hand, you will have the poster, we will give you hand deals, we will give you all those things, and then you will go to town, you will invest your mouth. You will say, I will not use my mouth to go see. I will not use my mouth to talk nonsense. I will every time, now whatever I want to say, I will talk about the retreat. That is investing your mouth. I'll tell you what you want. 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 I'll tell you and in the prayer bulletin, you have everything about, you know, prayer, how you can pray, that you will give 30 minutes every day. All of us, you have 30, 30 minutes. You will, we will divide ourselves into all the hours of the day. And then you will pick one, maybe your own 30 minutes between 1 a.m. and 1 30. And you will wake up 1 a.m. and you will pray. You will say, God, bless this program, save sinners, let people be converted. When you give that time to God, you are investing it. And the time you give, God will give you back to multiple folks. You can invest your money. You can invest anything, anything. Or even if you are not sure whether the church will need it, you can ask the leaders, I have this thing. Will it be useful? Not that you will say, oh, I don't want them to touch my thing. If I give them my cassette clear now, they will go and spoil it. And that is my God. I love that thing so much. You will not do like that. You will say, I'm giving. I don't have money to give, but look at me. I have a farm. Take all these things. Feed all the people. You know that pastor is not going to eat it. 
and it's not zonally that that we eat it, but we have seen human needs and we want to meet their needs. When we have finished meeting their needs, then our own needs also will be met. None of us will suffer in Jesus' name. And if you are going to be a citizen, 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 you are going to be a I will read two verses of scripture, then we shall pray. Proverbs 11, verse 25. Proverbs 11, 25. The liberal soul shall be made fast, and he that waters. And the water also in the cell. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke, what you get I said, I want you all to open your Bible there and read that verse along together with me. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke, what you get I said, I Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke, what you get I said, I get you. Once I finish this message, this is the last time I will be talking about giving anything for the retreat, giving money, giving anything. I will not come to the pulpit here to talk about it again because I know you are obedient people. And as you read this passage, make up your mind. I'm going to invest with the Almighty. Remember that it is not that God cannot do a miracle without you, but that He's giving you a privilege and an opportunity to give unto God, to invest with God. He's giving you an opportunity to co work. With his omnipotence, it's a privilege. It has, it's an opportunity which you must not miss. Luke 6:38. Shall we all go together? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that the men with us, we shall be measured to you again. Shall we all rise up, please? That little boy brought his bread. Those other people brought their basket. What are you going to bring to God? You can give your strength to walk on the retreat side. To, to build the tank, to work on the retreat location, you can bring your money, you can bring your materials. I'm sure you have something to bring. I want you to pray and say, God, I will bring this one. God will bless me. That boy brought his bread. It's a little thing, yes, yeah, but God multiplied him. And you are going to bring your bread. You are going to bring your basket. Whatever you invest, God will bless your investment. But know this, that it is a privilege God is giving you. God can do all these things without you. He can do it without you. Why don't you take this privilege and use this opportunity? If you are a sinner here, you can give your soul. Invest your life with God so that He will serve you. And they will give eternal life. If you are a student, you can invest your strength. And say, Lord, I'm going to give my strength. I'm going to cut bamboo, cut and front labor, walk, walk, and walk. You are investing something. Whatever you invest, God will provide and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Finally, you want to tell the Lord this morning that you want to give all to the Lord. It wasn't difficult for God nor with Jesus to come down to this world. But he gave himself for you. This time around, what will you give to God? Just tell the Lord, God, Depend on me. Depend on me. It's possible for God to have neglected you. But God wants to walk with you. He pulls the breath together with God. Father, we thank you because of your work tonight today. Thank you because of what you have given unto us. You gave us your life. You gave us your being. You gave us an example. Example of a boy who it was not possible for him to give everything that he had. Five bread and two fishes. Day. And many people are praying. Father, we are praying today that as much as we are, that we will give to feed people that will come to the retreat in Jesus' name. <laughs> what you want from us is our faithfulness. What us to be faithful with our time. What us to be faithful with our money. What us to be faithful with our time. Father, we want to pray this day that no last set of things that you are giving unto us, we shall be faithful in Jesus' name. You have told us that when we give, you will give us. More people fall, press down, running over. Father, we are praying during the week. As we march to the retreat ground, grant us your power in Jesus' name. <laughs> These are your days, O God. And we have turned out in the day of God. Your people shall be willing. Create willingness in our heart in Jesus' name. <laughs> willingness to give our time. Willingness to give our money. We need us to give our person. And at the end of things, at the end of the retreat, we will be blessed in Jesus' name. None of us will lie. None of us will lie. We shall come back. We shall come back. Rejoicing. Bringing back through. Put us to repentance. Put us to the blessedness. And the power of God, the merciful power, leaders, pastors, we come into the church in Jesus' name. <laughs> Thank you because you have answered us. As we still go back to our souls this morning, we start the one sin or the other. All of us, every one of us, we shall be faithful to work and to listen and to be blessed in Jesus' name. <laughs> We thank you because you have answered us. As we go home, let's go home with your blessing. Let's get done with your blessing. Let's continue to live with your blessing. Let us know inside your blessings in Jesus' name. Thank you because you have answered us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.